gonna be a quick project I got I'm not gonna do nothing to the cab just mainly the bed and the tailgate as you can see it's dented right here I'm gonna have to pull that out and do some body work on it I think the flare is still good still got to be sanded down I got a new bumper and a new tailgate Look like it's pushed in here. That shouldn't be no problem getting out. Over here, don't look like the bumper touched this side, so that's good. But it's a dent here, I'm gonna have to pull out. I see a few dings here and there. Along here. That's gonna be pretty much it. Just gonna do the bed and the uh, tailgate and put the new bump on. I'm gonna do the body work, paint and all. Like it's a lot of dings here. This one looks like it's pushed out. But we're gonna pull it around back and get started on it. This is a 2005 Chevy Silverado. 2500. All right, then pulled it around back. This is gonna be a good time for me to do this here because I just finished flow coating the Monte Carlo, and I'm gonna let it sit about two weeks before I start cutting the buffing. I'm gonna let it harden up. Should be good, but I had this done way before then. Let me take you over and show you the uh, tailgate right quick. Here's the tailgate. I think the tailgate fell down at one time and hit the hitch because it's dented in here. But like I said, I don't have to worry about fixing this here because I got a new one. I just got to take the emblems off and transfer them to the new one once I paint it. And probably some of the parts, I'm not sure what all I'm going to need off this, but we'll figure it out. The first thing we're going to do is start removing everything, such as the fender flare. Get it out the way. And we're going to take the bump off. But we're going to take the fender flares off first and the tail lights. flares, tail lights, and the bump off. I'm not sure what all I'm going to need to take off this bumper because I haven't opened up the box to the new one and transfer over to the new one. I know I'm going to need this step because I know it don't come with it. Guess we'll remove these decals. I'm going to try it with a heat gun first. And this pinch type, it should just sand off because it's so brittle. But I'm going to try it with a heat gun and see if I can remove them. 
Since we got everything stripped off of it now, we're gonna take it up here and clean it up. So we'll be able to see all our imperfections and dings because you can see it a lot better on a shiny surface. got it cleaned up and pretty much shiny. We're going to take this red sharpie and mark all our dings and dents, which we already know this whole area here is going to have to be by the work. Pretty much all that there. And how you find your dings and dents, you want to look at it down the side at an angle. You might just got to keep moving around. Let me take it on this side. You might be able to see it better. a lot of the dings here. Pretty much the whole top might gotta be white. Be on the safe side. Let me finish finding all my dings, then I'll cut you back on. We'll go from there. I think I got them all, but I'm always looking during the whole process because you can always find more. Trust me. Got this one here, two here. They're pretty much all over. And this bottom section. And over here, I got a push out right here. So I'm going to have to knock this in. But the rest of them dings might find more later on. You never know. But we're going to call it a day. Start fresh in the morning. So I'll cut you back on. We're gonna get back started. We're gonna tackle this body work. I guess we're gonna start on this side. A lot of these dents, I could use the hammer and dolly and probably knock them back in place. But I'm gonna wield a stud here with my stud gun. So I'm gonna have to grind this down to bare metal. You can use a die grinder, but I'm gonna use my uh, grinder with a flap disc on it. Take it down to bare metal because these studs ain't gonna stick to uh, if it ain't down to bare metal. So let me do that right quick. Okay, since we got it down to bare metal, we're going to weld a few studs right down the middle where the crease at. I'm just going to mark maybe three spots where I'm going to weld the studs at. You don't have to do this, but I'm just doing it for reference. I think I'm going to put 
one now. Maybe one now. Here's the studs welded on. What you need, you need to get your pull hammer like this here. This the one come with the Harbor Freight stud welder. It ain't no good for real. It's a stud stuck in here because it always getting stuck. I don't want to that's on the stud right. So I had got this here from Jigs. It's just some vice grips with a pull, pull hammer attached to it. You can find them on eBay also. Once you pull your dent out, pull all your studs out, then grind the uh, spots that you wear the studs on, grind them flat. I also went on and done this here because it was a lot of push outs. I just took the body hammer and knocked them in. Now I take my DA. And uh, I got some air grit on it. I'm just gonna feather edge the rest of the, the good air. So when I wipe the fill on, it'll be feather edged into the paint. Let's see if I can pull it up right quick. Now I mix up me some filler and I wipe that air. You want to blow it off first before you wipe it with filler. I just got to mix it up, then I wipe it on. We're gonna let this dry and we're just gonna work our way around. We're gonna do all the bigger areas first. I guess I'll go ahead and knock this out. Then I'll concentrate on this spot here. This is the biggest area here that need to be pulled out. I got this side here pulled out. I just got to finish taking out my studs and grinding it down. Got it ready for some body filler now. I actually put some fiberglass filler in my areas that I pulled out. It's up right here. I'm just going to use regular body filler because it's a lot stronger. But I'm going to sand this down so I'm, I'm just going to knock the top off of it before I put some fiberglass filler on it. Give me a lot better surface to uh, spread the filler. I'll probably take the filler all the way up here put a light coat. It's much easier to block if you skim the whole area. We're going to wipe this area here. 
Gonna take care of the three major spots. Then we're gonna go around and do all our dings and rock chips. This is a push out, like I said, on this push out, I'm just gonna use this body hammer here with the point and knock it in. I got a push out here, also one on the other side. Plus, I went and took some masking tape and masked this bed line off so I won't scratch it up. Also, get prime and paint on it. And once we knock these in, we're gonna take some 80 grit and just scuff up the areas where the dings at. As you can see, I got those areas scuffed up with 80 grit. The reason why I didn't take these down to brown metal because it's just minor imperfections, just deans from rock chips. I found a few more when I was sanding these spots. That's why I'm always looking over the job I'm doing because you will find more during the process. And I'm gonna be using this Dolphin Glaze. It's two part, comes with a hardener. I'm gonna mix some up and wipe my areas. I think I said this before, but before you wipe any filler or any type prime, if you're gonna prime something, wipe filler on, just anything that you need a bun, you wanna make sure you blow it off and wipe it down. But you ain't really gotta wipe this down. Just blow it off because if you don't, you're gonna have pinholes from this dust, the filler or whatever. It's just gonna just go over top of that dust and then you're not gonna have a good burn. Here's all my areas that I just wiped. Now it's time to start shaping everything up. We're gonna do the major spots first. And we're gonna use, we're gonna use our DA just to knock the top coating off because the top coating, it'd be hard to sand. Once you get it down past the top coat, which I knocked some of this off here because you can tell it's lighter, but I'm gonna Use my DA first, then I'm gonna take my straight line sander here. I got some, I think, 40 grit on here. And I'm gonna try to shape it up with that first. Then I start doing it by hand because it's a lot quicker doing it with this and trying to do it by hand. But I'm gonna finish it off by hand. Here. Okay, you can see where the straight line didn't hit them low areas there, where it's still kind of dark at. Like right here, it's low. And right here, it's high because I'm starting to hit metal. So I'm gonna have to fill this area here to bring that up. Put a little skim coat on it. Also, here, this high right here. I might knock this in because I'm still hitting metal where the fill at. So I'm gonna knock it in some so I won't hit no more metal here. And I can bring this down some. I'm finishing up with the straight liner, but I'm gonna give you a tip. To find all your lows when you're using the straight liner, you can use some guide coat as well. Just spray it on there. Then once it's dry, you can take the straight liner and go back over it. It's going to show you all your lows and highs.
let me show you all the low areas. Low, low, all oh, this low, this low, that's low, 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 low. That's a high area because you can see the metal. I might knock that in. Also, this here. Right. Here's my spots to that white that was low. Let me take you to the other side and show you those. I think I'm about to call it a night because it done got cold out here. Well, it's been cold all day, but I was trying to get something done. Can't be in no rush when you're doing this body work. We got some sun out here today, so it's good working weather. But let me get you caught up. I had uh, took the straight line, knocked this down with 40 grit. Also this, but when I started filling, filling it, I seen what this, uh, when it got dented in, it had pushed this upper portion out. So I had to take the body hammer and knock it in. So I wiped the skim coat on that. I'm trying to let it dry. But we finna start blocking it with 80 grit now. Cause I had did this with 40 just to knock it down. But I'm gonna knock all these areas down before I start blocking it by hand. It'll be a lot faster. I'm gonna use the DA here. I got some 80 grit on it. I'm just gonna knock it down. I'm not trying to get it flat. I'm just trying to get it somewhat to the surface. And once I get it down, I'll start blocking it by hand. Let me take you on the other side and show you the other side. When you knock it down with the DA, you want to make sure the DA keep it flat because if you don't you're gonna put more damage on it than what it already got just keep it flat we're just trying to knock the top of it off should be good right there just less blocking you gotta do got that taken care of now we'll start the blocking by hand but before we start doing the blocking I'm gonna put some guide coat on this spot and plus the spot on the other side I'm not gonna worry about these areas here I'm gonna put some on this spot also plus I had brought the tailgate out and guess what you'll never guess well, I'm pretty sure you will. It's damaged. So I'm going to have to do some body work on this here before I move on. So that's going to slow me down. It's dented here. Also, it's like a push out along this whole side. So I'm going to have to knock this down and put a little fill on it. So let's go and take care of that before we start guide coating everything. I'm not going to show you the process of me repairing this. I just wanted to show you what I've done, done so far. I just took my body hammer here and knocked those areas down that was pushed up. It's a little ding here, so I'm just going to wipe a skin coat here, also here, here, and there. Tailgate taken care of. I'm just ready for some primer now. Also, I done blocked all my small areas I just gotta do this and them other two this here and on the other side but let's spray this guy coat on first you're gonna need you're gonna need some hand blocks I got different sizes here I got a larger one here but we're not gonna need that larger one this one's gonna be fine for the repairs we got I also got this small one here I'm gonna wet sand with this one and this one and I got this round one this round one good for areas like this here because it's kind of it's not a flat surface it's rounded off so it'll be good for this area but we're going to use 80 grit. And what the 80 grit is going to do is going to, all the 40 grit scratches we put in this, when we was trying to uh, block it down, 
with the straight line. The 80 grit gonna take the 40 grit scratches out. It's gonna get it ready for primer. We're gonna take it from there. Let me put a piece of 80 grit on here for this 180 here. Okay, let's get started. We're gonna go on the X pattern. This way, the one go that way. It's just to make sure it's flat. But we might gotta grab a smaller block, you know, to get, because it's like a puncture here. We just gotta switch blocks because sometimes you can't use the same block on everything. But let's get started. Now you can see this area here was high because all the guide coat has been removed. That's low, low. Just gotta keep bringing it down until we get everything down flat. This area is low. You can see this area here is high because it's removing the old existing paint. It's down to the factory primer. So we might gotta feel this. If we go down to the metal, we're gonna have to feel this area here. Yeah, that area, they're going to have to be filled because I'm down the middle here. So we're just going to keep on until we block the whole panel. Then I'll cut you back on. Okay, we got this here blocked. Let me show you the low areas. This low, this low, this low. And where you see the different tones of filler, it's where I might have put a little bit more hardener in this batch and less hardener in that batch. That's why it's darker. But this area here low. And what we're gonna do to fill these areas, we're gonna use some glazing putty. Let me show you. This dolphin glaze. I'm almost out of this tube. I got a little bit more. I should be able to get that. But I know I can do this after I prime it, but I like to try to find everything before I shoot my first coat of primer. So we're gonna mix some of this up and wipe it off. I'm just finishing up, scuffing up the surrounding areas because I'm going to spray primer all the way down to here. So I need the uh, primer something to bond to. And I'm using 80 grit, same as I did when I blocked it. But on these shiny spots here, the spots that's good, I just be using 320 on the DA. That's so when I spray the primer, when I prime these repair spots, the overspray has something to bond to. Because I don't want the primer just sitting on top of this glossy paint because it ain't gonna stick. It'll flake off in the long run. And here's the 320 here. Finished up with the 320. I just gotta do it around my edges and up to the bed liner. I don't wanna take the DA out with a pill, I'm just gonna do that by hand. I'm gonna use uh, my room scotch spray. Do it around here, up in here. Also, here. Once I do that, I think we'll be ready to shoot some primer.
I had scuffed the fender flares up with maroon scratch spray also. And I had a few scratches and scrapes. I used some one part glazing pudding. Let nose dry. But I'm finished with the rest of it. Now I blew it off and washed it off, take it inside, and we'll prime it up. We're just going to be priming up the repairs first. All right, got it pulled in. Then we'll start masking up everything. I'm just going to put a whole piece of plastic over the cab and mask the uh, fender wheels off and the bed cover. Finished up with all the masking. Ready to shoot my primer now. Like I said before, I'm just going to be spot priming all the repairs first. Then I block that, then I shoot some more primer over that. I think I'm just going to prime it twice because I think that's all it's going to take since I spent a lot of time on this body work before I'm priming it. And I'm going to be using this Master Pro Primer. It's a bone color, more like a off white, yellowish color. Let me mix the prime up, then we'll get going. Here's the tailgate. This is the following day after I had sprayed it on this here. I'm not going to spray no prime on this twice. I'm just going to block this. I'm going to wet sand this. It should be good enough to go ahead and paint. But on the actual bed, I'm going to block that again and spray some more primer. These the same way. I'm just going to wet sand these and spray them. I see a few imperfections like here and now, but I could block that out. And this bigger stuff here, I'm just going to use my one part glaze and put it and put in those areas. But the rest of it should be able to get blocked out pretty easy with the wet sand. Let me take you inside and show you the truck. Here's the truck. It actually turned out better than what I thought it was going to turn out after the first, well, after the body work. It's the first prime. But I'm going to put some guide coat on this here and block it with 180.
I want to pour a glaze and put it. And now I'll shoot some guide coat on this. This will be ready to be wet sanded. Here's the guide coat. Now we're going to move up to 180 grit. You know, we used 80 on the previous block. What we're trying to do, we're trying to get these 80 grit scratches out. You know, at first we used 40 grit. So we used 80 grit to get the 40 grit scratches out. And so on. Now we're going to use 180. And after we do the 180 block and shoot some more prime on it, we're going to go with 400 right before paint so that should be fine enough to that paint should cover the 400 scratches pretty easy so let's uh remove this 80 grit and we're gonna put some 18 on it same process each step as you go up and grit with finer finer it gets it get easier and easier to sand because you pretty much got it smooth we're just knocking the uh, previous scratches out. The 180 signing is done. Now I just gotta blow it off. Then I wipe it down. Ready to shoot my second round of primer.
It's two coats of high beer primer. It's been about, I'd say, 15, 20 minutes. No, I say 20 minutes since I sprayed it. I'm gonna go ahead and unmask it, pull it outside in the sun, let it dry on up. Then I'll wet sand it tomorrow. Put it on our side. Now we're gonna put some more guide coat on it. It's gonna be the final sand before the base coat. Here's the final day. I'm about to start wet sanding. It's going to be the same process as we did with the other blocks, removing the guide coat. But we're going to use a smaller block and the panel must, where well the panel is pretty much smooth, we're just getting it smoother for the base coat. And what we're going to be using, we're going to be using this 400 grit. I got a piece already cut in half. We're going to drop it in our soap and water. And we got two blocks. We got a rigid block and a flex block. That's all we're going to need on this one here. We're going to let it soak for a minute or two, then we'll get started. This is what it need to look like. Let me finish up. Then we'll move on to the base coat. Got the wet sand and done. Now I'll wash it off, but I'm not going to paint it until the morning. But I'm still going to wash it off right now. Washed it on up. You can use the dampness from the water as a form of clear coat. It'll show you all your imperfections before you get ready to paint it, if you have any. Back in the shop, ready to remask. Then we'll be ready to spray some paint. All the masking complete. Time to get some paint on it now. We're gonna wipe it down first with some wax and grease remover to remove all the fingerprints while I was masking it. But this is gonna be like a walk in the park here, spraying the base coat, clear coat, because I'm always spraying candy or pearls. It's gonna be a lot easier here. Let's go ahead and wipe it down. Gate got it hung up. Also, the fender flares on this one here. If you can recall, it was cracked here. 
I had fixed that with some fiberglass on the back side up. As you can see it. Here's the paint I'm going to be using. It's by Omni. The original paint code is WA805K. And the color is a dark spiral gray.
Here is the base coat. There's three coats. Got a fine metallic in it. Can't really see it now. But let's mix this clay up and spray the clay.
three coats of clear. No problems at all. Except a little lint and dirt nibs trash in there. But I probably let it sit out here for like a day. Pull it out in the morning, let it sit in the sun. Then I might just de nib it just where the trash is. It's more on this side because I had this door open. Up in here. I just sand those down and just buff that area. I'm not trying to get it flat because the original paint got orange peel, so I'm not trying to get this so quality. Just get them nibs out. So you can see two spots there. But what I will do, I will unmask this area here because I don't want the clear to clear the harden up. It'll bridge, then when I start peeling it up tomorrow, it'll pull my paint up. So you want to get that while it's still wet. Here's the fun part, reassembling everything. Like I said, I got my Rupes buffers and sanders out. I'm gonna de nib. It's been sitting out long enough, so I'm gonna de nib. The air has got a little trash. I'm also, I gotta transfer some stuff over from this tailgate here, yeah. like the emblems and I think just these, yeah, the rest of the stuff I got new, I just got to just put them on a new tailgate here, and I got the bumper here, I haven't taken out the box yet, I hope it's in good shape, but we'll see, so, then I got this cap here, protect the cap to go on top of the tailgate, Got installed that. And this piece here, it came off the old tailgate. It just latched onto this to keep the cover latched. Then I gotta put the fender flares on. But once I get all that done, wash it up, then I'll cut you back on.